What is going on everybody? I am Prepper Princess. I am the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you're interested in purchasing the book, I will go ahead and leave a link down in the description box below. Today, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the fact that I sold my car. As you all know, I've been on a bit of a minimalism kick and if you know the backstory to my car, it's a really interesting story. I used to drive a 1998 gold Toyota Camry that was gifted to me by my grandmother who could no longer drive. I loved that car. I mean, it was the perfect car, perfect size, comfort level, luxury, gas mileage, economy. I never even had to wash it because even when it was dirty, it still looked clean because of the color gold. I don't like gold, but I really like the fact that I never had to wash my car. I go, I've had it for several years, eight years, something like that. Uh, had 300,000 miles on it. I'm driving to my friend's house in Utah in the car and it poops out on me in the middle of the desert. Now, when I was working at this particular job that I had, everybody always made fun of me of my old, because I, I drove an old car and I had a flip phone, right? I still had a flip phone. iPhones were the big thing and they still are. But at the time I had a flip phone, I go on vacation and I come back with a new car and an iPhone. And you're probably wondering why the iPhone? Well, while I was out in the middle of the desert, they couldn't find me for five or six hours because I guess a flip phone does not reach the towers the same way that an iPhone does. An iPhone can pinpoint exactly where you are. The tow truck driver can drive right to where you're at and he knows exactly where you are. Well, with a flip phone, uh, it goes to the nearest tower, but it doesn't tell you where you are. So it took him five, six hours to find me out in the middle of the desert. I come back, or I'm sorry, I go to the car, I bring the car to the car dealership to fix it. They wanted $5,000 to fix my 98 Toyota Camry. The transmission went out. Uh, and $5,000, I had just transferred all of my money to a different account and I couldn't get to it. I just did it a couple of days ago. Before that, I had like $75,000 just in sitting in a savings account and I was sick of it losing money on in a savings account. So I invested it. And then like two days later, my car breaks down. Perfect timing, great. <laughs> it, was, it was awful. So I, and I had been looking at the 2015 Toyota Corolla in the color white, and it's a car that I always wanted. I loved it. It looked sporty and you know, it, it looked like the type of lifestyle I am. Like I'm outdoorsy, but I'm sporty and I feel young and I'm great. Um, so I get the 2015 Toyota Corolla right? The white one with the, the sport, the sport one. It's got an eco thing and all this stuff. I get it um, because I didn't have the money to pay for the car repair and they would not take a credit card. Go figure. Uh, maybe this is why Dave Ramsey always says to have cash and use a debit card, but I couldn't fix it and I was devastated. It was a sentimental car. It was a perfect car. I loved that car. I was going to drive it till the wheels fell off and that's pretty much what happened. I drove it till the wheel, till the wheels fell off and I always regretted not being able to get it fixed. So when I moved out here, I started shopping for my having the new 2015 Toyota Corolla. By the way, I paid $13,800 for it. And then I come over here and I find the 1998 Toyota Camry gold in color and it has only like 75,000 miles on it. I mean, seriously, that like awesome, right? So I bought that car. So now I have two cars. I am not a two car type person. So for the last few years, I've been looking outside my window with two cars. I have to pick which car I'm going to drive every day uh, so that I, it doesn't just like stop working from non-use because I drive, I ride in my e-bike almost everywhere, including to the grocery store. And I was commuting to work on my e-bike and I just had these two cars and I barely even use one. So I'm like, okay, well I need to sell one of these cars. Which one do I sell? And the choice was easy. The one that makes me the most money, right? And as you know, for the last couple of years, the prices of cars have been skyrocketing. And this is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity because of the chip shortage and the, the labor shortage to sell your car for what you paid for it or more. Now I walked out of the door with, when I sold it to Carvana, Carvana, not a sponsor yet, 
but I sold it to Carvana over Kelly Blue Book in perfect running order. It only had 68,000 miles on it. Um, and they gave me a check for 14,447. So I paid 13,8 and I got 14,447. So that's 647 more than I paid for it. Now I can come on here and say like, okay, yeah, I sold my car for more than I bought it for. I made a huge profit. I could say that and I could fudge the numbers that way, but let's be realistic. In the car, I had to replace all the tires. That was $400. I had to replace the battery. That was $150. So that's $550. But you got to remember, I also had to pay for car registration and car insurance. Gas, I don't use gas as a bill because I was going to be paying it anyway, um, no matter which car I'm driving. So if you're looking at it, I'm probably down about $500 plus you've got the matter of inflation. I mean, inflation has just skyrocketed like crazy. So I can't do the calculations on inflation based on when I purchased the car and when I sold it. But technically I sold my car for a profit at the highest point that I could possibly sell a used vehicle. And when it comes down to it, let me, let me tell you this little story. When I was 16, I always wanted a Jeep Wrangler Renegade. Loved that car. I was like, oh man, that's the coolest car. I'm gonna get one. It's gonna be yellow. I'm gonna like, or baby blue. And I'm gonna like Jeep, yeah, Jeep. And then my friend Jamie and I went on vacation and she borrowed her uncle's Jeep Wrangler. It was the most uncomfortable car I could imagine it had horrible gas mileage. I was sunburnt because they, we took the top off. And I'm just like, after wanting that Jeep for so long and then finally having access to one for like a week or two, I was like, I do not want a Jeep. I do not want a Jeep. And I kind of got the same feeling with my Toyota Corolla. Don't get me wrong, it had great gas mileage, beautiful interior, perfect condition. It had all these gizmos that I'm not used to, like a backup camera and it, could sync with my phone so I could talk to people while I'm driving um, and, and cool stuff like that. But at the same time, the black leather interior, having a dog, uh, makes things really difficult to keep clean. And another thing, I am super meticulous about keeping my car immaculate. So I'm using Armor All all the time. You know, I want it to be shiny and new and beautiful. You roll down the window for two seconds and the pollen gets in the car, just pollen or dust or just a leaves, you know, whatever is in the outside air. You roll down the window for a second, there goes your beautiful, shiny, wonderful black interior. It's now full of pollen and it looks dingy and dirty all the time. Again, I have nothing against the Toyota Corolla. I just would have preferred a cloth beige interior, which I have with my 98 Camry. Now, with my Camry, the one I've got now, it's a 98, so it's 24 years old. Perfect running order, still, it only has 83,000 miles on it. I don't, I can do the maintenance myself because I'm so accustomed to having my old car, my old Camry, and now I have the exact same one. And so, you know, doing the maintenance on it is no big deal for me. And yeah, it's an older car, but um, I kind of like older cars because I'm a little bit weird. Um, but if I were going to get another new car, um, it's, you know, in the future, I'm probably going to get a minivan. Um, and the reason for that being is that I have projects I want to do around the house and having an economy car doesn't really help me to move. Like if I want to buy a new door, I have to order it and have it delivered and pay an extra hundred dollars instead of just picking up, picking it up then and there while I'm at the store, that type of thing. Plus, I would love to be able to take out the seats and go car camping like all the time. Uh, I love, I don't love camping. I hate camping. But if I were in a car and I had maybe one of my solar units with me so that I could use my cell phone and laptop and watch TV or something like that in the car, then I might be more prone to go camping instead of going to a hotel room every single time I go out in nature. <laughs> Ironic. Yes, I hate camping. Anyway, all right, folks, so if you are in the market for selling one of your cars, we are in a once in a lifetime opportunity to sell your car at the highest premium that you possibly can. Because these chip shortages, these labor shortages, while they may last for a couple years, two or three years, they're not going to last forever. And even though the prices of cars are really high right now, 
It's not going to stay that way forever. The entire history of used cars has always been that they're like super cheap once you know you lose 30% of the value when you drive it off and then it loses so many thousands of dollars each year that you drive it. Um, now is the opportunity to sell. And I sold mine to Carvana, it was really easy. I drove it in, they gave me a check, I gave them the keys, transaction finished. I was literally in and out in 10 minutes. Carvana, not a sponsor yet, again. <laughs> All right, that's what I've got for you guys today. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.